What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here with the one and only Roxy Stryer, co-host of Collider Live, my very good friend, a fellow TV file, a television file, a tuba file. I don't know, what do we call it? What, what do we... As long as it's not pedophile. But <laughs> Nailed it. Ooh. Put that mic a little closer to your face. Uh, they already fixed it for me, and this is where he said it could be. I don't know. There, right there. Hey right yo. there. Can, is that still okay? Are we still good? Yeah, you're still good. You look good in that camera. I'm feeling guilty about my pedophile joke. It's nothing to joke <laughs> about, man. Oh, God. It's all good. It's Coming all out. good. Hot. But you could see there are some probably some characters in the Ozarks uh, that uh, in Ozark that have a bit of a pedophile vibe to them. Hey oh, hey oh, that Ruth Dad though. I am sh- I am sure She's about something. him. All right, so uh, before we get into it, this is uh, we now that we have the TV talk. What? What are you laughing about? I'm still laughing about my crappy joke. And like, <laughs> did I learn nothing from James Gunn? No, I like, thought have was, I learned nothing? I thought that was pretty good. I mean, like, it wasn't. You're like, how about those pedophiles? Like, you didn't, you didn't say that. And you know what's worse? Just to harp on it. So we'll yeah, why don't forward. you? Yeah, just stop holding on to your grudges there. Uh, so on the TV Talk podcast feed, we have the main show, which airs every Friday. That hosted by Thad Williams and myself. Uh, we're gonna I like have that. Yeah, he's the best. Um, we're going to have you on whenever we can. I know uh, Thursday afternoons are a little tough for you sometimes, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to get all the, you know, the regular TV talk people in here, but Thad and I are here every day and Thad, uh, I think personally knows way more about TV than I'll ever know. I can't believe he's a TV genius. But what's so strange is that anytime, like I knew the first time I met you, we didn't leave the room without me knowing that you know as much about TV as I do, that you watch (laughs) as much as I do. Dad and I have had so many conversations. I've never heard him talk about TV. Really? So if he's that, like I need... I need him to spread the knowledge. Like uh, you have to, you have to be willing to be the person who loves TV. Sometimes it's a little embarrassing that you're not the movie person, but if you're the TV person, then be that TV person. Yeah, that. Well, that is, he's quite legendary in, in when it comes to TV knowledge. So when you come on TV talk, you will see Thad uh, flex the old television muscles. I'm ready those, to be impressed. Those remote control style mus- muscles. Quick story about remote controls and TV. So I just sold a TV on Craigslist, and huh. uh, a guy did not trust me. Came up to my place, turned it off and on like five times with the remote, tried it in a different plug. This guy was crazy. I'm like, dude, it fucking works. Excuse my language, he but it that, works. He thought that you were trying to scam him as in you were going to sell him a TV that didn't work yeah. at all? Yeah, at all. I was like, dude, it works. You can see it clear. All you have to do is connect it to a satellite or antenna or something like that, and it works totally fine. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, we Were, were you we're selling t- it for really expensive or something? 80 bucks. Oh, my God. It's a 39-inch flat screen. Bro needs to chill. Yeah, Home take boy. it easy. And he told me he was gonna he was gonna <laughs> give it as a wedding gift. I was like, "You're giving a used TV out of the box as a wedding gift? You're a terrible wedding guest." Ooh, anyway, that's brutal. Maybe he has a box at home that he tested out. Maybe, maybe it's possible. All right, we're gonna talk Ozark hey uh, on Netflix. This is a full review. So if you have not seen Ozark on Netflix, stop listening. Stop watching. If you never will see Ozark, you can continue watching. It might just be a fun conversation between me and Roxy. You've already seen that we're willing to go the distance. Talk Correct. Talk about the, the really hard-hitting issues. So if you're watching, I'm going to hold up the Josh McCuga for Jeopardy in five, four, three, two, one. Spoiler talk starts now. Oh, I didn't know what was going to happen after that. I thought yeah. that you were going to make an announcement. No, not yet. I'm not the host yet, but uh, you know, Alex Beck has a beard now, so I feel like he might be taking my luck. Oh. Anyway, Call that on it. so Ozark season two, Netflix, I feel like this may be the best. Okay. It's definitely the most underrated show on Netflix, I think, because not enough people are watching it or talking about it. I, I know Dan Patrick walked, w- watches it because I listen to Dan Patrick in the morning and he talks about it. This season was fantastic. I think this is Jason Bateman's Breaking Bad. I think that uh, it's the most honest and realistic look at what money laundering does and how it's done kind of a situation, but also so gritty. And it really takes a place like the, have you ever been to the Ozarks? No. So my brother used to live in Northwest Arkansas and part of. By choice? Yeah. Well, for work. 
Uh, and or, the Ozarks are where people go for vacation there because the part of the Ozarks is, you know, there's like a, there's an actual music venue that we saw Luke Bryan at mm-hmm. in this Ozark. Anyway, um, Ozark season two, it, it, or, oh, the actual Ozarks is a very, very cool place. It's ritzy at points, but you can see and like a lot of beach towns and stuff like that. The townies, the locals, they have a grit to them. You know, whenever you go to a shore town or you go to a town that's oh, a vacation I've, I've, place. I've been to many a shore town. In the off season to see the locals? Yeah. Talk it, about Cape Cod, man. Right? It's a weird spot. They only have 25% of their population year round. Really? Yeah. It, it gets weird. Weird. It gets weird. That's when people become addicts. Right. And this season, there I mean, their promo this season for, for Ozark was there is no off season because this entire season takes place in the winter. It takes yep. place when there's not an influx of the uh, of the tourists and stuff like that. So it's a lot harder to, to launder your money when there's nobody to spend it when it comes to this. But I want to get your thoughts because I didn't know you were such a big fan Massive. Of, of Ozark season one because anytime I meet somebody, when I feel like way more people don't watch this than do. Yeah. What, what, are your, what, what are your thoughts, one, on season one, and what are your overall thoughts on Ozark? So I, I love Ozark, and I'll just say it off the bat. I'm, I'm a Breaking Bad fan, but okay. I prefer Ozark to Breaking Bad. Really? Straight up. Okay. Uh, Hot I mean, take? Yeah, and I, I'm sure that just made some people stop trusting my judgment, but you know, it is what it is. We've all got our opinions. I love this show. I think season two is even better than season one, uh, and I loved season one. Right. But there's something about this. Maybe it's the way that it is, that you can watch it back to back to back. I'm so much more invested because I care about these characters, strangely enough, and I never gave an actual F what happened to Jesse or to Walt. Jesse a little bit more, but... I, when you I definitely didn't care what happened to Skylar, and yeah, I really care I, about what happened to Laura Linney. Uh, or Hank, or any... Like, I didn't care what happened. See, I like Hank. I didn't care what happened to... Any of I them. hated his wife. I care what happens to everybody on Ozark, mm-hmm. uh, which is, and sometimes you care, like especially this season. And that's important, especially in a drama about a very not so good subject. Right, exactly. But I, I could see this happening with a family that I know. It, like the the whole premise of Breaking Bad seemed to me always like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know if you do that. Which fine, if you do, you do. But this. I could see it with one of my like okay. rich ass friends growing up, and all, anybody I knew growing up, growing up who went to prison, it was for this kind of thing. Yeah, like, it's like the white collar stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not going for the other things; you're doing something sketchy with money, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. So, mm-hmm. uh, for that reason, I feel like it was more relatable. I I think the characters are interesting. The fact that they have kids that I don't hate is a, a plus. You know what we we I've, we talked about it on the main on TV talk last Friday is it's really hard to write for kids, uh, especially teenagers to not make them look kind of whiny and just teen angsty and annoying. And, and especially in a family drama, did you watch Homeland? Did you watch the first few seasons of Homeland? Yeah. I think I watched how it for an... six or something. How many okay. have there been? I, don't know. I, I think I stopped watching in season five or maybe six. So we may when, have watched the same amount of Homeland. When did we lose Brody? End of season three. I yeah. Think? So I stuck with like two more seasons and then I was. Mm. Right. Um, I really, I, if you remember in Homeland, how annoying the kids were in Homeland. It was everything. It like. was, they they were just terrible. And in this show, that is was so. Was her name Dana? Dana, I think, was the wife mm. in Homeland. Or maybe it was the daughter, but she always wore those boots. And then the kid that was just always was eating a. So annoying. And the kid was just always eating cereal and crying. Yeah. He was the worst. And what's really interesting is that the kids would have the right to be annoying in this situation. Like, you uplifted two kids. And From you, a major city, a great life. And brought them here and, like, we're honest with them about why you're here, partially honest. They have every right to be like, <laughs> yeah. should I keep going? Yeah, keep <laughs> <laughs> and the daughter, Loki kind of is like that, but sure. she's still not annoying because I'm like, yeah, girl, like, Emancipate you're smoking yourself. weed, you're doing yeah. the thing, you're hanging out with the bad kid, or sort of, but he's a good kid. And you tried to be in with like, the hot guys last season, it didn't right. work out, and there's something like they stole your boat, or you stole something. Remember that for well, season one? Yeah, they like, no, the guy had sex with her and then never oh, caught her Oh, she was again. on the stolen boat. Correct. And that, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, And that didn't work out, and so that's what you do. You like double down, and then you date the bad guy, and then... You don't know why he's not hooking up with you. Enemies like, close, enemies closer, friends close, enemies closer kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I thought that even though she had potential to be annoying, she never bothered me because it was very legitimate. And I think one thing they probably didn't play on, and I don't know if they'll ever do it, but Wyatt's dad, the kid Wyatt, who his dad got killed, killed 
whatever. Yeah, by Ruth. By Ruth. Um, Brutal. Awesome scene. Incredible. Um, he was gay. Remember? Yeah. So of I wouldn't be shocked if Police they made. The if, yeah. If I, I wouldn't be shocked if, um, you know, they never really touched on. But he never hooked up with uh, the daughter. What's the daughter's name? Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's it with Wyatt. Although I've thought that I mean, I thought that he was gay. Maybe Maybe three three. is gay. Uh, Well, the reason I don't think with Wyatt is because. Uh, I mean, maybe he is. His explanation was kind of just like. I love that explanation. Like, I didn't. I don't want to be the summer forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. And I get that. Uh, sure. And I think that a lot of guys, like, if you're the girl coming in for the summer, and this is like your your equivalent of a summer home, even though they moved there. Yeah. And this is your fun time. He didn't want to be that guy to right. her because he's super smart. And that's the another interesting and thing very about aware. Wyatt. Yeah. 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 Um, and I loved, speaking of Wyatt, I loved the way that they played that this season. All season I was like, it's just a matter of when. Ruth's right. going to tell him. Ruth is going to tell him that she killed his dad. Yeah. And it's just a matter of when. And when she, Ruth is a calculated genius. Yeah, she I love is. Her. And when she finally did, I was like, damn right, you stick it to your fucking dad. because Charlotte is the daughter's Charlotte. name. Charlotte. Crap. I got it. Charlotte. What's Sophia Hublitz. What's his name? Yeah, Sophia Hublitz, who was born in 1999, which makes me want to off myself. Yeah. Uh, Jonah is the son. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if it's a Jewish family. I don't know. I got a lot of Jonah Bird? Friends. Is Bird a Jewish name? Hmm. Larry wasn't. <laughs> True. So. Okay. It's about my knowledge. But it's spelled differently. Maybe, anyway. Maybe anyway. If you said Berg. Ber- Larry Berg? Well, if it was Jonah Berg. Jonah Berg would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Making friends on all of the places. <laughs> so far, I've offended the Jews, the pedophiles, <laughs> the Arkansas people. <laughs> Anybody in the Ozarkian area. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. So I'm just saying something Did about you? her dad. Oh, uh, n- her telling him, finally, when she was stuck it to her dad, because she's not going to let it be held over her, yeah. it made sense, because I was like, if she hasn't told him all this time, how are we eventually going to get her there? And I thought that was such smart writing, that it was like, the only reason I'm going to tell him now is because I'm not going to let my dad use this against our relationship. Right. Yeah, 100%. And I love that. Uh, I thought Ruth's, one of Ruth's best scenes in the show, was very. it was a very short scene, but it was when she bought the riverboat and she kicked that dude over in the wheelchair and then punt and then kicked the son in the nuts. Uh, it just kind of shows that, you know, Ruth is a incredible character in the fact that she is, in my mind, she is the ticking clock, okay? Ruth is always moving. She's never stagnant. Something is always happening with Ruth. She is constantly a thorn in somebody's side. She takes no prisoners. Nobody pushes Ruth around. She's a little firecracker. Whereas anytime that Jason Bateman needs something, it seems like Ruth is there to help him out. Yeah, but what I really didn't like was the fact that she was willing to go to the funeral home and slash the uh, coffins because she was helping her dad look for the money. After yeah. everything and after she said, you can trust me. But after I get, the waterboard. I know, but what was he supposed to do? I, I, I agree with you. But also... Listen, you you are a girl in a in a de- des- in a desperate situation. You're also impoverished, and you're and you think your dad is looking out for you, and it's your dad, and you killed his brother. So there's a level of guilt. You also just got waterboarded. You're in a very vulnerable state. You want to get the hell out of Dodge. You want to help your dad. You kind of still trust your dad, and you do it all. I, I understand that because and you, you think Marty Wyatt from having to do it. Correct. Too. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Totally, I didn't even didn't even think of that. Um, so I don't think that that I fault her for doing that, but I do I do think that that was the turning point for her to say to her dad, "Okay, I don't know where this money is. You're terrible, and I don't want anything really to do with you." I thought that was a kind of a, a, a great moment for her in that funeral home because then once Marty Bird puts more trust in her, because I understand that Marty Bird is kind of an asshole to a lot of people, and they even talk about it. They even call him that. You know, um, Erica is it Erica? Rachel? Rachel, sorry. Man, I'm bad with names. Is that who you're talking about? The yeah, Rachel. side piece? Yeah. When Rachel and, and Ruth are talking about how much they hate Marty Bird, really and truly, Marty Bird it helped. I mean, without Marty Bird, those girls are still just totally, they're running a crappy lodge, or Ruth is living in in poverty. Okay. Slow your roll. I'm just saying. Ra- Rachel was so happy. She was running this lodge. She was stoked to be there. Like, Was it, she? 
I mean, maybe... She, no, she wasn't. She was, it's not like she was amounting to genius, but she was just living a normal life. And he came in, now she's an addict. She was in prison. She was, That's not all his it. fault. Uh, it's not all his fault because she, everybody has a choice in how you handle a situation. But, Correct. But it wouldn't have happened if he had not... He was the impetus for it. Okay. Okay. But... Okay. I don't know. I I, I I I don't feel it. I don't see it. I, I don't. Mm. I think that th- there's so many different ways to react to that situation, and she reacted the, the wrong way. But I get plot I devices. I get the plot device. She did react the wrong way, and I and I don't understand why she continues to try to hook up with Marty. It makes me really uncomfortable. And, yeah. And, and him doing it back makes me uncomfortable too. Because he's like, such an asexual dude. But if this guy effed your life up so bad, yeah. And then you're and you blame him for everything and you're willing to turn against him to the cops, then you're really gonna like slob on the knob. Yeah, I don't again, she seems to always make the wrong decision. Yeah, that's so. true. Going back to Ruth for a second, I have a sure. question for you. Okay. Do you think that Ruth is going to now that her dad is dead, mm-hmm. is it bye bye daddy, I'm moving on and the birds are my family, or do you think she's gonna try to investigate what happened? And if she finds that the birds were in any way at fault for what happened, that she is going to turn against Marty. Yes. But I think that's too predictable. So, and, and, and I hate Marty, that. I hate that plot line because I want Ruth to be a success. I I want Ruth to work with Marty. Is Marty's wife? Uh, She's more of a villain now than. But was she involved with that? I'm still yes. confused. Well, she was definitely involved with the uh, money and giving it to him and having him run. But then, in the actual killing, that has to do with her, not just the mafia. No, she told the cartel lawyer. Get and, this done. And that's the conversation that they had. Yeah, because Marty said, I mean, the whole thing was leading up to them actually being able to kill somebody, right? So when Marty kills Mason, you can clearly see that he is totally distraught about it. You know, he realized that the whole situation, because Mason was totally irrational. The guy, they had taken everything away from they had to from him. Mason. Yeah, but he, yeah, he was a necessary kill. death in that situation. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the Mason thing, I, f- I mean, of anybody that I feel the worst for, it was probably him as far as the people that the birds left in their, in their dust. But right? he was psychotic But he was, though. but was I agree. Him. I agree. The whole wife thing last year, the whole thing, they gave him the opportunity to be like, Hey, you can, this is yours. Like, take it. What are you doing? And he wanted money. Still no, too. and he, it's silly. Um, so, but you could see Marty was distraught. Do you think we're murderers? Because there's a point in the season when he's like, do you think we're murderers? To, to Jonah, I think he says it. And maybe even to Charlotte. Do you think we're murderers? Do you think we're capable of that? And clearly, the wife is. Yeah. Yeah, I think. But it, what made me wonder what exactly went down in that situation is when she says, when the lawyer comes up to her, who, by the way, whoever that actress is, is bomb. Awesome. You never know which way she's exactly going. Yes. She's killer. Um, but she's got to be British, right? Yeah, something like that. Maybe Aussie. Yeah, I'm uh, when, her up. when she comes up to them and she says, by the way, uh, he was shot down leaving town, when Laura Lenny turns to Jason Bateman and says, I love you, it made me think that she wasn't aware that that was what was going to happen because now she was concerned about them. Right. So... I feel like she knew that the they would take care of it, but maybe didn't know to what extent. Okay. But maybe not. Maybe she did know. I think I honestly think that Laura Linney is the she is the I mean, she's everything in that family. Yeah. She's the she's the incredible political, whatever you call it, advisor, lobbyist, back alley fixer kind of a situation, right? She's a badass. She's ruthless. She doesn't care. Politician. She's a politician. She does anything She's in order to win. She's a mom. How amazing is it? She knows that that guy needs to go. He's a bad seed. He's a bad person. He doesn't deserve to live. That's true. I think that her line back to Marty was so amazing. What? Newcastle, England, UK. Oh. Janet McTeer is the actress's so name. Good. So good. So good. When, uh, when she turns that Marty line on him and she says... Uh, I just didn't have time to argue with you. I was yeah. like, Oof. awesome. Oof. The whole thing, when she Who's keeps going really over his head, this? Laura Linney, dude, I'm telling you, there there might not be a better TV character as far as 
knowing the angles in the thing because Skyler was worthless in Breaking Bad. Yeah, right? and she actually brought down the show for me. One hundred percent. All like all the time. There weren't times when when there was a. It's kind of like <laughs> there's some Family Guy episodes when Peter will look to the camera and go, "Yep, it's gonna be a Meg episode. You can turn it if you want, right?" Yeah. There are a lot of times when they make the wives out to be the villains a lot of time. Not villains, but just the annoying people that get in the way. Laura Linney is badass. And I love how they wrote it. That's why I think I really love this show so much. Is there, It doesn't feel like there's a weak character. There really doesn't. Yeah. Honestly, I can't think of one. And I, I think who might have been the weakest was Wyatt's dad. Right. And we got rid of him. Although that was an interesting story arc, too. I Yeah, I love that storyline. And I, I, I liked him better this season when we got him in Wyatt's as, head. As the ghost. Yeah. Yo, that usually that kind of stuff bothers me on shows because I'm like, oh, really? This That's is what we're angle. doing? Yeah. This is like, but in the Ozarks, I feel like when you when you don't have things, this is why they say like people turn to drugs in in towns like this. Yeah, because, because like, so little, so little going on, yeah. and he is using, and or at least he's drinking yeah. underage, and he's like smoking, smoking weed, weed and yeah. whatever. And he doesn't know what happened. And he's thinking about it all the time. I think it's very realistic. Maybe he doesn't see his dad in exactly that form, but like he hears voices or whatever. So it didn't bother me. And I, I actually thought it really enhanced the story to see what was going on. No, I, I 100% agree. I think, I think that when you're at that trailer park, there it's so well shot and it feels so realistic in a sense of they're just destitute. They don't have anything. And these, they're, 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 career criminals and they believe in this curse even Wyatt wrote about it in his essay they believe in this that curse was so sad. oh I know right and this curse they just keep embracing it and poor three you know he's just going to end up somehow because he's an idiot he's not smart enough he's not smart but Wyatt saw the end game so did Ruth and when you're put against the corner you know you fight out and these kids are fighters and they're doing their thing and I, and I don't I find it the, the writing so well in the sense of you hate the parents, but you see that there's hope in another generation, but yet they keep getting beat down and beat down and beat down because they've always been stepping stones for other people. That's why I really like Ruth that she takes charge. Like I love the storyline of Laura Linney's brother, who's a total, you know, Patsy taking over the strip club and he gets the crap kicked out of him, but nobody messes with Ruth. And she's like five foot, nothing, a hundred, nothing. And nobody beats up with Ruth, but this like kind of, just, I'm an, a motivational speaker, and this is what my motivation is. I love that. And that he, you know, a stripper just totally takes advantage of him because she sees money signs. I mean, oh, it's, it's, it's really well done. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then another Ruth moment that I thought was so incredible that just showed exactly what you're talking about, that they're fighters and they're trying to get out, but, like, they keep getting stepped on, is when she goes to see the house. Yeah. And she doesn't get out of the car, and she ends up, because she has this dream, which... Everybody has, no matter where you come from, you have dreams. And her dad's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You're stupid. You're whatever. So she finally gets up the balls to go. And then she sees another couple and they're better fit for it or whatever mm -hmm. she's thinking in her mind. And she drives away. Fish that. out of water. Yeah. Fish out of water. What did you think of the overall um, the storyline with the Snells and the land? Did, okay. There was one thing that uh, that kind of gets to me a little bit sometimes because it always feels like the politics takes so long. But in this show, they, they seem to really – you know, push things through, I guess, to a certain extent. It almost seems like, oh, if I want to get a casino, it's going to take five years to get a casino. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, one of the reasons for that, though, is the binge aspect of it. Sure. Like if we were w waiting every single week, we would, they would, it would have feel to... longer. Yeah. Okay. I like the Snells. Um, I, I don't know if I want them to be a big part of next season because now that she's on their course. Yeah. Now that she's not with him. And she has this baby. I kind of want to put her on the back burner a little bit. Do you, what do you, you think is going to happen with this baby? I think that somehow Laura Linney is going to get the baby back. Okay. Uh, because she, I don't think she's comfortable with the fact that Jason Bateman did this. I think that, that Marty did this. I think she's not having it. Okay. But it, it has to take a back seat currently because right now she couldn't even address that because she had to first make sure that they're not moving and getting out of town. So I, I, I did like the storyline. I thought, uh, and what I think would have been a more interesting choice, is at the end of the Snell storyline, if and which is what I thought was happening when they were in the kitchen, the way it was shot, 
I wish he poisoned her. Yeah. Because I can't stand I her. think it would have come full circle like she's done all of these things and he's loved her forever, but enough is enough. And you pushed the final straw. Uh, and I think that he was somebody we could have worked with and he yeah. could have still been incorporated. She's just such a wild card and so crazy that I get why they kept her around because she'll always, she's even if we don't see her for six pollute episodes, this casino. yeah, she'll come in somehow. But I think that it almost would be more interesting to keep him around to see how we could have worked with him because Agreed. she's just like, she, gosh, she's on one. And uh, when she finally kills him, it was a little bit too predictable for me. Like, Did you see it coming that yeah, he was going to get it? Definitely. I mean, definitely finally in that kitchen when you see her turn around and make the coffee and he's doing slicing a melon, something, something that yeah. he was doing. I was like, one of them's going to get it. Please let him kill her. And then right. when, when she's... And he's kind of stumbling. I was like, God damn that bitch. Love is blind sometimes, but even, you know, because I, I hate her. Yeah. I can't stand her. I, I keep thinking to myself, you've killed everybody else. What's one more person? Just kill them both. Like the cartel is, you mm -hmm. know, but I mean, I get it. It's their land and they've, you know, they've got this certain situation. But I mean, ugh. have you, has it crossed your mind at all? Like even one time that she might be a decent mom? I mean, no. Okay. Because cool, if she was cool. a decent mom, that kid is an idiot. Um, and I've seen, I mean, a lot of times in TV you see these, I mean, like Sharp Objects. I know that's not a good mom or I anything like that. It. Oh, you didn't watch Sharp no, Objects? No, but I hear it's amazing. It's good. Um, but you're the one who told me it's amazing and I need to watch. The ending is amazing. It's a slow burn till then. I can I can give you the first six episodes and you can figure out the ending if you'd thanks, like. Thanks, thanks. Um, but, uh... No, it never crossed my mind that she's a good mom. She's a smother and she's crazy. And I think that she would destroy that kid's life. I was listening to the radio this morning and the new term that they're calling it instead of a uh, helicopter parents is lawnmower parents. Have you heard this? <laughs> Where they're just mowing their kids down. Well, it's like if anything's in the way, they mow it out of their way. And so the kids never have to cut anything. And uh, so like they're paving the way and mowing the lawn. I like that term. And so then kids can't deal with anything themselves at all. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, and I feel like she would probably be that. Like yeah. anybody messes with them. Not only do you like attack them, you, you murder them. Yeah. Like straight up. Yeah. Serial killer status. <laughs> and she is just, I mean, you could totally see her as some sort of serial killer. She's crazy. That, she, and she got that look. The casting in that is insane. When they end up um, at when she's like comforting him as he's dying and she's like, I love you. I was like, this is a horror movie. It is. Like they need to spin that off into some. I love the watching. Just call them grow the show up. Darlene. Yes. I love <laughs> watching when they were kids and her coming into that booth and everything. It's cool. And w the second we saw that, I was like, oh no. Uh -oh. Because you would never touch their backstory unless one of them's dying, if yep. not both. I thought it would have been cool too if they had both poisoned each other. That would have been awesome. Right? Yeah. A little bit too Shakespearean, but yeah. like if whatever with his melon and her coffee and then they had both died there out there in the woods, oh, that would have been really cool. Yeah. I mean, she gives him cyanide, but he gives her fentanyl as yeah. like a, you know, come full circle kind of a situation because yeah, yeah, she yeah. poisons the heroin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think. How romantic. How romantic. How Romeo and Juliet of you. Is there, uh, is there. Did you like the the FBI line the storyline? Did you like the poli the politician Frank uh, Grimes? Is that his name? Frank Shields. Rick Grimes? Rick um, Grimes. Are you talking about the guy that she oh. that uh, she ends up threatening and Charles Wilkes? Look like? Sorry, yeah. Charles Wilkes. Uh, yeah. I thought it was awesome. I'm a little confused on his motivation still, and if he is still in love with her. With Laura Linney. And, yeah, yeah. And, and why he at the very beginning when she didn't take his advance why he still went through with it. That was interesting. Hard to get. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying it would never happen. It was just like, huh, that's <laughs> a different kind of character that, huh. that we don't see very often. Yeah. So I do think he's interesting, especially because I still feel like after everything she's done, he pines for her. And when, when you have that kind of love for somebody, uh, you'll, love is blind. Yeah. You'll do anything. So Did you, I, I wasn't a real big fan of that politician killing himself. I didn't think that really fit the story that well, but it, it felt very um, abrupt. Mm -hmm. Like, we, uh, and then the fact that he did have the depression history it, that felt very convenient. Right. And I didn't know I didn't why we did that. I think it was necessary. That. Unless they have something for season three planned that like he couldn't have been there for or something. I or if it was like the the foundation that they're supporting via the money. And, and now some... they have to launder through that or right. whatever. Maybe there's something that they know that we don't. But as of now, I, I'm with you. I was kind of like. Yeah. Oh, well. 
What do you think? I, I mean, I loved the Jimmy Small, aka Buddy, with mm-hmm. the Kansas City mob situation. I love God, him. me too. He was the biggest, the biggest death for the season <sighs> for me. Right. Because in the car. I mean, you, did you know when you were in the car and they're talking and 100%. laughing? You know it's coming, I right? Yeah. I know. His relationship with Jonah is so strong. The best. I loved it. Uh, yeah. And like you said, with with the mob, when he goes uh, and he vouches for Marty, mm-hmm. it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like he's a baller. Totally. And I, I that really, one broke my heart. I think we're really going to miss him next season. Yeah. It wasn't a mistake for them to kill him off because here's something I hate that shows do. Breaking Bad did it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of this person's about to die seven seasons later, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, were you or weren't you, bro? Right, right. Uh, and we knew I thought he was going to be dead next season. So I don't think they really could have pushed it much past this season. Yeah. But his character was such a great plot device that I, I do think they're going to need to find something for season three for Jonah to do or somebody to come in. Like, What was the most satisfying death for you mm, in this season? Oh, most satisfying death. Because for me, it's the FBI agent. Really? When Ruth's dad bashes Ed in? Yeah, I loved that so much. But I loved his poor it. mom. I don't that care. seemed a little convenient too. So his mom just happened to be a heroin addict as I well. I guess. Yeah. I'm just a messed up family. But she wasn't from there. She was just living just there. Just doing heroin. Yeah, okay. I guess Close people by. do heroin all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it might have been, not because I wanted him to go, but just because I did think it was. Um, the fact that she ended up killing him, the Snoyle's death, might might have uh, been like satisfying in the way that and I, I loved like, Ruth Langmore's dad's death. I didn't love his death, really, because he was gunned down in the street. Uh, like I, I loved that he died. But the car- cartel is famous for that; they love a good street gun down. I know, I know, but that to me was I knew it was coming, and it was like uh, I would rather somebody bash his head in by the rocks. Well. You got to have some sort of a clean death, right? Yeah. So I know. I mean, I, I his death was a ticking clock all season because Langmore seemed to die close to the finale in each season. Uh, uh, so does three die next season? Does no, Wyatt die next season? Who who dies? Maybe, maybe one of them. Maybe one of them. Uh, as a quick tip for people, uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm very down with people burying their family in their yards. Yeah. It's like mm. it seems a little. Uh, a little old school. I get it, but it's just creepy. Like, mm, especially if you're gonna have a kid grow up there too. Right. Like this is where your grandparents live, and then they they watch a horror movie one day, and then they figure their grandparents are haunting their house. And yeah, yada, yada, yada. And they dig in the dirt and stuff. Yeah. Like they didn't feel that far underground. No, I did. I did really love the whole bone switch kind of situation it's smart. And, and digging up. I loved loved Buddy burning down the field. I loved that. But he went out. With he his and Laura Linney. Well done. Yeah. Well, yeah. Roxy Stryer, everybody. She's a real piece of work. Oh. Great at jokes, first thing. Is you know, a piece just... of work a compliment these days? Yeah. I've been out of the loop yeah. for a little bit. I've been saying piece of work since high school. I like yeah, it. but I usually say it about people where I'm like, oh, God, he's a piece of work. Yeah, but the, it's, the, it's the way you say it. Like, you're a real piece of work. As like a funny thing, it's like, oh, this guy's a piece of work. Mm-hmm. I think it's all in the inflection, don't you? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Take it. You're going to take it. Yeah. Okay. So w- we had the introduction of the Kansas City mob. Do you think going forward that's going to be our big bad? 100%. And if not, well, then why do they do this? I mean, they're right. a perfect villain for season three. We pissed them off just the right amount. We can still kind of work with them. I don't know what Marty's – well, Marty's plan was to run, so he didn't think about what he was going to do. I mean, he even says it. That's why I played chicken with the Kansas City mob. Right, but I don't know what his plan is now because he's he's effed. He, I feel like – he has to stay loyal to them. Better to piss off the politician that shook on it, but I don't think he will. So uh, I definitely think they're coming for him, but I don't think it will be like season one, episode one, boom, 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 boom. I think this will take us till the 10th episode. I think season three opens in like the casinos in full effect and things are going somewhat smoothly. What do you think? And if that's the case, what do you think Charlotte's doing? Is she there? Yeah, because this whole emancipation thing... I don't know. I feel like Charlotte's probably at Missouri, maybe, or she's kind of living on her own, and the and the and the mob or the cartel is keeping a close eye on her. What do you think about Charlotte's lawyer? Do you think that because she's threatened, she knows all this stuff now? Do you think if Charlotte doesn't emancipate, Charlotte's lawyer comes forward or something, or that the Kansas City mob uses Charlotte's lawyer and blackmails her or something, or 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 the cartel? Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, her storyline really is very interesting to me. I, I I really like her. I really want her to her to have something that's Charlotte? yeah, Charlotte. Um I'd love for her to, you know, kind of be part of the casino, part of the business, could try and take it over, like be her mom's understudy, something like that. Because you can see Jonah as the young uh, money launderer. I'd love him. I mean, I know that they, they don't want their family, but the family's involved. So how do you keep your family involved? It's kind of like Sopranos, right? Meadow Soprano knew, AJ Soprano knew, Carmelo knew, Carmela knew. They all knew what was going on in the family. They weren't exactly at, complicit or first, worked with exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Meta was, like, weird about everything, and she was not cool and, like, didn't know to what extent. Yeah, but they but they eventually knew yeah, what yeah, I'm say- is what I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? I, is Come what on. you're saying what you're saying, is, then it, I know. It is what I'm saying. Uh, but I think that, that, that having the whole family involved is, well, it's too late now. You're already involved. Do I teach you the business? Kind of a situation. How old are we talking with Charlotte? Is she seventeen in this and trying to emancipate, or are we thinking? She's I think younger? she's gonna be a senior in high school. She's probably seventeen. Yeah, because she. I think she's a year younger just, than Wyatt. I'm wondering how old you have to be in, in Massachusetts. I think it's eighteen to work like the table. Oh, in the casino. Yeah, no, I think you got to be eighteen. So maybe we see her like go through the season arc, deciding to emancipate or whatever it is, and finally like. Full blown, start working there at the casino. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I just wonder why they introduced the emancipation storyline um, and didn't resolve it. If if they're not planning on doing something with that lawyer who now has knowledge they don't want her to have. Right, and she's like very unlikable. So super unlikable. Didn't love it. What do you? I mean, do you think this casino is going to fail? Do you think it's going to succeed? Where, where, like, where does season three go? How do you? I mean, how would you like to see this show end? I guess would be the. I don't know. Do you think five seasons, six seasons? Because I mean, like, the FBI is already on them, but the FBI blew their whole case. Uh, yeah, exactly. But that doesn't mean that they don't have any case, and like you can always get them for something else. And for sure. especially when they have a casino, maybe the CIA gets involved now too because cartel and having to be above board on all of this stuff just seems so unlikely. Mm-hmm. So uh, I feel like that will probably be their final season, whenever that is, whether it's five or six or four or whatever, mm-hmm. will be. A, a hard, more hardcore us versus them, the government. Mm-hmm. Because right now we haven't even built to that. We still have to deal with the mob. The mob. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the enemy of your enemy is your friend. So I'm guessing probably by the end of this show, we all of those people we've pissed off, we team up with because stick it to the man. There's nobody worse than the government. Roxy Stryer. Roxy Stryer. Just put some some notes on it. All right, final thoughts. Gosh, the show is good. Uh, we were talking uh, to Clark Wolf about this on Collider Live. Mm-hmm. I think if you if you didn't like the first episode of the first season, it's something. It's pretty quick to tell if you don't like it, then you won't like it, and if you do, it only gets better. Mm-hmm. So if you want to give the show a shot, only one episode. We just spoiled everything for you, though. So enjoy that. The I will say this: it's. Um... It's the easiest 10 episode binge that the episodes are, I mean, a full hour plus every episode. It's so, e- it's such an easy 10 episode binge. I am still today binging Luke Cage. Yeah. You know, it's 13 episodes. Just is another. It's so long and it's not, and it's, it's hard. I like it, but it's hard. This I went through in one weekend. Done. One weekend. So easy. Couldn't help it. Roxy Stryer, where can the good people find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. There you go. I'm at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Hashtag at Josh McCuga for Josh McCuga for Jeopardy. Tag at Jeopardy. Just tell me you want me to be the next host when Alex Trebek finally retires. Uh, when is that happening? I don't know. We'll see. Mm. We'll see. Uh, you guys can find all of the shows on the Collider Podcast channel. You guys can uh, subscribe to the Collider TV Talk iTunes here. Give it five stars. Rate it. Tell us what you want, what you like. Add, tweet at us. Tell us everything. We're going to get Roxy Stryer on more and more content because she's the best. You guys are the best for watching. Thank you, as always. Put down the book. Pick up the remote. Pick up the remote.